welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another tutorial. Today I'm making a 3D project for people that don't make 3D projects. I am one of those people who I usually focus on making greeting cards and although I really do like 3D projects, I don't allow myself the time to do it. So today I'm going to share with you a project and it is extremely simple and I hope that it will be easy enough for you to duplicate. I'm going to be using a die from So Detailed Thin Lips Dies and this die is going to be available on January the 4th and that'll be in the um, 2017 Occasions Catalog. There's three dies total in the package and I'm going to be using the larger of the three dies. To save time I have cut out one of the dies and what we're going to do is use two for our project. So I've got a piece of basic gray cardstock. I pre-cut the die so I can show you what it looks like coming out of the die. I did poke all the little pieces out ahead of time. And this is going to be a super easy project. I have a battery operated tea light candle and it even still has the little pull tab in the back. So this has never been used. I'm gonna be using a piece of vellum cardstock and the vellum cardstock is cut to be able to fold up into a square. So let me give you a few measurements right off the bat. This is the die cut that we're gonna be using and we're gonna use two of them to go together around a small box. It's going to be a very simple sort of a box, so don't get a little too put off about we're not going to make this all crazy box. It's going to be super, super simple. This die cut is almost five and a half inches long, which is half the length of a piece of cardstock, and it is two and five eighths inches high. So what I want to do is, I'll get rid of this guy here, I want to cut a piece of vellum at 11 inches, which is the regular length of the card stock already, by three and a quarter. Very simple. Once I have that cut, then we need to score. I scored on one quarter of an inch, which is down this way, and I did that on my stamp and trimmer. And then I scored at five and a half, which is right smack in the middle of the length of this card stock. And then I scored at two and three quarters on each end. That's actually just halfway point between these other two. So this is basically going to be our box. The box is not gonna have a top and it's not gonna have a bottom. This is a very simple project. So by scoring, we are able to get a fold. Now I have already folded the vellum here on the different score lines. And it doesn't have to be a majorly hard burnish. You can use your bone folder, but I just used my finger right along the edge here. So this automatically wants to go to a square, okay? Is this easy enough? I hope it is. I hope you guys like this project. So I'm taking each one of these die cuts and I'm gonna fold it in half. And the way that I did that was I matched up the two end pieces here on this tab and then I gave it a crease and then very carefully I used my fingers to make a crease up the die cut end. So I'll do it to this one here and show you. I am matching up the two ends giving it a crease here at the at the middle and then carefully just pushing down. This doesn't have to be a, a perfect fold because it's gonna go around the edge of the box. Okay. Our project is starting to come together the way that it's going to look. So I want to take a piece of a pair of scissors and I'm going to snip just up until the edge of that fold on the score line. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to fold it in on itself in all four places. So this is why you can see that I say this is a 3D project for people that don't make 3D projects. This is more like making a card. So now we have some stability with the fold lines that we're working on. And we're going to start attaching this project. Okay, take one of these die cuts and using some score tape or this is tear and tape from Stampin' Up, this is not a typical like snail adhesive or tape runner. This tape is much more strong and the reason I want to use it is because it will really adhere very nicely down to the vellum. See how sticky it is? It's very sticky. All right, so I'm going to get it right here and I don't think that it's an accident that this tape fits perfectly. I'm sure that Stampin' Up! En engineered it this way. So I'm just placing this tape. It doesn't have to be perfect. I have a little bit extra over here. So I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to use it on the other end where I didn't have the same angle that I wanted. So I'm going to find a way to work this piece over here. Now I will trim off the edge. Like so. All right. It's a good idea to burnish this into the paper and the, and the back of it will come off really easily. So by, you can use the pokey end or use the rounded end and just push the paper down into the tape and that way whenever you go to remove the backing tape it'll just slide right off. I have one more side to go. You could also use fast fuse if you like. Fast Fuse is not as easy for me to control as this tape is, and so I chose to use Tear and Tape instead of Fast Fuse. Okay. You could also just kind of push from this end. I'm going to trim it. Okay, so now we're ready to pull it off, the backing. Sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry, my phone rang. It's the danger of me actually recording the voice at the same time that I record a project. I want to place this die cut along the edge that is in the middle. And there is a reason for me doing this and I'll tell you about it in just a moment. So here, I'm putting it on the fold and just above where this line is here of the, of the uh, score line. All right, so that's gonna actually cover the edge here. And on this side, I'm going to do the same thing and it's going to close up this edge here. This is normally I would have some kind of a um, like a flap, but we're making this project as simple as possible. So I am going to remove the tape backing. I pushed back out these um, score lines just to make it lay down a little bit more flat. I am putting the fold of this that we that we made that crease line and putting it right in the middle of the uh, matching crease line and that here this down so this die cut is actually going to close up 
the side here. You don't have to worry about making a flap. This is a very, very easy project. Now before I close up the bottom pieces to stabilize it, I'm going to take a glue dot and I use my scissors or paper snips to take it off. I fold it over to where it just makes a really small half of a glue dot. And what I want to do with this is I want to place it in a spot that is going to stabilize the die cut. So I place it at a join area of the die cut. Okay, I'll take another one of these, fold it over. You can make it as small as you can and put it in a join area right there. So that actually holds the die cut and the vellum together. And here we go for another one. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do one glue dot on each panel to where we have a total of four places that it's held down. And you could choose the place that it's going to inter intersect. I'll put it right here. Okay. I hope you guys don't mind this style of YouTube video. This is how I do my Facebook live posts and they're pretty popular. So I thought you guys might like the same way. So you see this is starting to come together. We only have a couple of things left to do. I wanna take a die, a, a, a glue dot and I'm going to fold it in half and put it on a corner here. Fold in my corner and I put it actually a little too far. I'm going to move it in and put the next flap on top of it. All right, we're gonna do that and continue around the project until we have all four corners. This is only to give some stability. I didn't wanna even take this step but I, want, I don't want you guys to put together your luminary and not have it have enough stability. And this is still the easiest way that I know to make this sort of a project. You can actually make this gift to, um, to give uh, for a birthday present. You can put some balloons. Any kind of die cuts will work. I thought the uh, detailed thinlets or really pretty touch. Okay, so if you can see that it's just a quarter of an inch that gives the stu stability. And this is pretty much the project. The only thing we have left to do is to remove the little piece from the back, turn on the little tea light, and place it inside. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give enough light, the vellum mixed together with the basic gray cardstock is a very neutral color and it's going to be complementary to just about everyone's decor. Let me turn my light off so you can see. Get in the dark corner here. Can you see the light shining through? See how pretty that is? Let's see if I can get it up closer to the camera. Isn't that nice? You can do this. You can make it with any kind of die cut that you have, or this would be a good time for you to purchase this set of so detailed thinless dies. You could add a sentiment, but I like this as a home decor item. And again, we just have the edge here for support. And look how nice that looks. You can see it in the, in the shadows very pretty isn't it well thank you guys for joining me for another video tutorial if you like this style of project please leave me a comment and let me know that this is something that you would like to see more of and this is literally a, a 3d project for people who are not inclined to making 3d projects it's so simple and easy you could do this with regular cardstock but vellum's going to get you a little bit more 
opacity to be able to see the light through. There it is. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.